my new space, Jemima. Today, <gasps> Closet Confessions is jewellery. And it looks gorgeous. I did spend a few weekends ago, I really went to town. I got the table from John Lewis, um, 250 quid, but beautiful, really like an Art Deco table. And I wanted nothing to take away from what was there so I could see it easily. And I went through everything and I had my jewellery in all different locations. And this jewellery I've had for years and I kind of was going to take you through some of my oldest pieces here that I've had. But this collection is a whole mixture of Zara, Vintage, Marni, Lanva, um, Prada, um, uh, Monsoon probably uh, accessorised still some things. And it's amazing how you can get some things which cost nothing and they have as much in your wardrobe as much joy and you know importance in your wardrobe is something that costs a lot of money so with jewelry for me it's never about its cost ever um so i'm going to start with the least expensive thing in my wardrobe my jewelry wardrobe that has given me the most joy and it's down here i have worn this when i wanted to add some neon into my life and i got it from h m and i think it was about six pounds 99 and it just brings me utter joy. I wear it in the summer a lot. It's that kind of bright madness. If you look close up, they're really cheap beads, but they add so much. I wear it with silver, white, um, neon, uh, everything. And then I got another one because some very nice lady sent me one that was not as empty as these are. So <laughs> that neon moment pervades from my wardrobe to my, um, to my jewelry. And then I also got, and I don't remember where I got this, but when I was doing all my What Not To Wear films, I used to get a lot of jewellery. And whenever you do fashion, there's always a ton of, you know, jewellery on a counter when we were doing, you know, making over 100 women in a day. And we had to have lots of jewellery. And I'd always, you know, get stuff from all different um, places in the world. And this, I think, I got in Israel. I can't remember if it was Israel or the Netherlands. But it was this big chess piece and I wore it with a necklace. I wore it as a necklace when I had a deep V dress and I never wear deep V dresses very much. So to change the neckline of the dress, I wore this and it made my, my V neck dress. In fact, it was a V neck dress that wasn't deep V. It was the bad V on me, which is here. I can either do a very closed, very deep V or I like round neck. So this gave me a shape, but this shape is also beautiful on a woman who maybe is curvy and you want to have something that comes down in a V and it gives you the sense that your outfit has a V-neck top, even if you're doing a round neck. So if you kind of love a round neck top, which is, you know, long sleeves and you feel doesn't honor your boobs, this will honor your boobs putting it on top. Then I'm gonna go on to, I don't know where to go next. There's so many places to go here. Um, yes, I had an obsession with collar necklaces, all right? And I've got them from everywhere. But the first people to do collar necklaces were probably, you know, you had big, bold collars. So this, I think this was H&M. Um, and this is just that shell necklace. I wear it in the summer. I'll wear it with a white sleeveless dress. It just adds a beautiful, like if you have a plain white shift dress, it adds everything to the dress to have these collars. And if there's texture and you've got a sort of silky fabric, it just gives another dimension to the outfit. So I think these are great. And this was, I think, H&M. The collars I very first got that I was looking for, these were from Prada and they did all these collars. And this one, I think, was from a collection they did about 12 years ago. And if you, you know, I used to have a plain shirt, like a white collared shirt, and I'd put this on top and make like a double collar, but it's sort of like with the shirt now, it's going to winterize the shirt a bit and just give it something different. And you could put these over a cashmere pearl gray jumper and it would just give it an added dimension. These are things, this is from my, um, I've got a few sort of heritage pieces, I would call them, but I had a lot of jewelry from my godmother and my mother and it was stolen years ago, all my real jewellery. So I haven't many things left. I got one or two things, but this is also that kind of a real 1950s necklace, um, which can look old fashioned. Like my grandmother would wear it sort of, you know, on bare skin, just like around the, mm. you know, at the choker. And for me, that doesn't work. So I just need to wear it so that it feels fresh. I'm putting everything on this white shirt, but if I do it tighter, I use a safety pin at the back, it gives a nice little detail of that burnished 
silver gold. So this color is a great color when you don't want to be fully silver or fully gold because it just sits in the middle. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so that's that. This is, oh, this is one of the very first things I got from Ericsson Beeman. And Ericsson Beeman was the shop in Elizabeth Street. And they, I have a picture actually, which we can show, which is me wearing this in a pap shop with Susanna when I, I remember it well, because press would always bring out this picture because I was wearing a see-through top. I think you know it, Jemima. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing this necklace. Um, and I love this. There was, you know, accessories were not doing this. You know, there weren't really inexpensive jewelry um, shops. So this was, I remember I was like, oh my God, it's half my salary for the month. Can I afford to get it? It was that moment. And now this can be made and sold for, you know, 20 quid. But at the time it was more than that. And I cherish it. I, I, it's, that's totally sentimental. I don't know if I'll wear it again. Lila might wear it but I just keep it there because I can't not. This is a weird thing. This is like the stethoscope of madness. <laughs> um, and this is from Liat Ginsberg. And Liat Ginsberg is one of my favorite jewelry costume designers. And lots of you have discovered her. And I met her in Israel when I was filming in Israel. And this is something she sent me recently. And I just, it's just like when I want to look like a doctor, but with a bit of glam. Totally um, glam. So the, and I have many other things from her. The things that you might recognize, this is one, um, sorry, this is one I, I wore a lot with a short white shirt. And it was always my profile picture on all my social media before I changed. But it's my kind of what I call my sort of wriggly worm necklace. And I wear it with an orange shirt and a pink shirt. I'd never wear it over black. I'd always wear it over a sort of rainbow, you know, over that sort of sunset color theme, because then it just makes it seem luscious. And I think when you wear necklaces like this over like black, it just makes it look cheaper and it's not, it's fun piece, it's architectural, and you wanna bring that out the best way. The only thing I've got like this of black and color, and this is Liat as well, but when I wear orange, I've worn this, I've got to say. This is the one that Dorinda saw on me and she was like, I want that necklace so badly. And she wore it with a beautiful, so much nicer than I'm wearing it now, but she wore it with a beautiful pink shimmer sequin over it. And it looked amazing. It was lush. It was like sort of, you know, she wore it over something sort of like that. And the colors just, the colors come out so yeah. beautifully. You see how much more pretty it is that. Because than, it's transparent. Yeah, it carries it, that color. Exactly, it picks up the color and it becomes the color. But it is divine how she's done it. And then the blue one here. I love the blue one and like I wouldn't do it over pink you know it's got to be mm. over its color or I might just do it if I wanted to just be clean and have something and you can make them long she does these different lengths change she's thought through everything when I wear black really probably yellow is the only color as a color I wear with black but I sometimes would have maybe a black top and have that on top mm -hmm. just to give something to bring it out of itself yeah and it's um, got its own drawer so it's, it's quite got special. Drawer. this is something you all know and i'm sure you can find this also how i've, how I've worn this on closet confessions but i wear this over navy over white um i think a lovely trini triber tried to make one the weight of the beads though is really really heavy and it's sort of you know it looks like it could be plastic but it's actually um their proper bead beads i went through this huge phase when I was in Australia, oh, this is always, it's like, my jewelry story is my filming story. So when I went to Australia and I was filming, um, there's a shop called Dinosaur and they did these unbelievable bracelets. And I became obsessed with them. When I was clearing everything out, I found them again. And here are some of them. And they're all made of resin. Actually, those are part of But these are made of resin, but showing my hand slightly changed. Oh, that does go on. But they're beautiful, the resin. And this one is exquisite. And I would wear, you see that one I did? So cutting. But I'd wear that with that and then do that really wide bracelets together like that and then I do a thin one and when you wear bracelets like this the trick is to go thin thick thin thick oh, you know okay. just to get that structure and texture changing um, I probably might do that with it and then I might you know if I was Iris Apfel I'd just do this and I'd build it up my arm and I think that I see you know some women I've met who are incredibly elegant women quite far down the path in life in their sort of late 60s, 70s and 80s. And when they do this and they have just to clean something, it's so cool. So 
I never got rid of these because I thought I'll come back to them at some stage in my life. And whenever I watch Iris Apple on Instagram, she has mm -hmm. all those amazing bracelets going up her arm and in the turquoises and everything. And I think I will one day go back there, you yeah. know, because jewelry never goes out of fashion. No. So and more colors. Um, this is a color that lovely um, Mrs. Rachel Solomon, um, who's one of our truly drivers, adores this. But this is for Mew Mew. And it's again, a little color which you can put on things. Yeah. But this one probably I wear more, but I also, because when I'm obsessed, I then think I have to get another shade. <laughs> so I got this one, which is in a sort of burgundy and I wear burgundy less, but I'll wear it again. You know, mm. these will never go out of fashion. And when I may be, you know, if I travel and I'm taking the bare minimum of things, I will up my stories and up the look of my clothes with jewelry. So I'll yeah. wear a, you know, cashmere jumper in this color with this on top goes from my day to my evening outfit. Um, and you'll just add it on. This is my latest acquisition, and I adore this. And I did this over um, the, um, oh, I'm gonna show you now, because I really love this, this is a classic. But this is my favorite top, we know that. And it does have, I have to always put the safety pin to make it round my neck, because I don't like the sort of looseness of it. But then I can always use this. And I did this the other day, and I just made the tops another top you know, just by having that there, and it just gave it that extra bit. Yeah. And it made it super cool, no what with black cigarette pants and a high heel for dinner. And it was from Zara and it was 19 quid. Very cool. You know, and it just works very well. So I love this. And it just shows that was probably 250 pounds and that was 19 pounds. And they both are doing exceptional things. This was from Stella McCartney and I was in Ibiza. I know, I mean, it's so funny the history I have with these. I was in Ibiza and I just started going out with this person and, and I went in with this friend of mine who loved shopping and she was trying on lots of things and I saw this next and I thought to myself, I love it so much, you know. Um, and and um, my new boyfriend bought it for me. And it was lovely because I'd literally, he'd, knew, he'd known for a year I hadn't bought clothing because I was very, setting myself a budget. And I just was so mad. And I haven't worn it that much. I got it out now and I actually thought, I love it again. Yeah. Let me think of ways I can wear it. And now these are all out in Closet Confessions. I'll, I'll show a lot of these as we move forward. But I'm just giving you that sort of sneak peek um, first. It, it got very tangly. And I used to, can I just say, I used to hang all my necklaces inside the cupboard on a on a um on hooks but i had so many layers of them i just wasn't seeing them mm -hmm. and having them here now i immediately see things this is from dinny hall this is a lovely designer and i used to have lots of her earrings um and this is a sort of gold necklace very fragile but has a place too to be just that v you know they all go in this line um like that and then you you know you wear it like that i then went to india and I'm actually going to go back to India in April for my um, nephew's wedding. And so I was looking with Lila and seeing what I've got. And I found I've got so, I bought so many of these bracelets, some of which were actually quite expensive because amongst these are some real ones. And I don't know which are which because I remember I bought three or four real ones and, I, and the rest were all fakes. But I have to now go through and think, actually, <laughs> which of these are real? Um, I once threw away a pair of diamond studs during that because I had all these dime stars and I always used to buy fake ones yeah. and I didn't realise that somebody had put my real ones with the fake ones. Just so we just keep them all so until we know. Yeah. So, um, so those I will use definitely going to India and they're just beautiful, all that line of bracelets. There's a shop in Venice which is opposite the Rialto Bridge and you go opposite and you pass the flower market and there's this lovely jewellery shop and they did all these kind of beautiful sort of pieces and my mother used to have things like this from Ken Lane, and I used to have some of her Ken Lane jewellery, this guy, Kenneth J. Lane, who's this American who did fantastic jewellery, costume jewellery, in the sort of 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And um, this reminded me of that, so I love this. It's actually like that on it, a sort of chinoiserie. And then I got another one which had another tassel. I've got quite a few of them. Tassel with the chain. Eric's and Beeman is a store I went to a lot, and this is an Eric's and Beeman piece. And, they made a lot of different types of pieces like that choker that I first showed yeah. you, but they also made always, they used to use sort of embellished beads and make interesting shapes. And for my wedding, I wore this really pretty choker, which I've got somewhere 
Um, so I have still quite a lot of Ericsson Beeman. And then I went through this phase of Lanvin. I just, you know, the color combinations are divine. It's and gorgeous. I will wear it with a, like a sort of burgundy um, jumper or with a purple jumper. And again, it's that thing that elevates the jumper to something incredibly special. Um, then I had an obsession with Chanel jewelry and I went round and I tried to, never would I buy it real because it's so expensive, but I went round and I was just facing LA for decades and Resurrection, two stores, and they would always have Chanel jewelry. So that's a set of Chanel pearls and I wear those a lot just like this or, you know, doubled or tripled. And then I also have other pearls in here. I have these pearls. Um, freshwater pearls I got in India and then I've got my grandmother's pearls here so they're just all a mixture of pearls together some costume and some not costume <laughs> and I just I'd layer three or four on it and then that was then replaced by this combination which is my original necklace that oh, then yeah. felt beauty um, made and now she sells them she got them made in India and I and like they are just fabulous and I love to wear them with some pearls this is a necklace from Anina Vogel and I have this one like this mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you the story of this is a very funny story so when I had my 10th wedding anniversary uh, Lila's father gave me this and and he you know thought of all these things they were all significant and Anina Vogel has all these charms and he they were all little things and then Lila gave me this in Venice um, and there's just, you know, all these things on it, okay, like that. Beautiful. And I, and I wore it all the time, okay. And then, uh, Lila's father died, and um, I was with Charles, and at Christmas, he gave me this. And he chose all the charms, mm. and, you know, it was just the most bizarre thing ever. Yeah. And each one is very, very special. And Phoebe, his daughter, gave me that little ring. So, you know, on this one I have a sort of Lila's dad, you know, with a little thing from Lila. Yeah. And then here I have Charles's one with a little thing from his daughter. I mean, they've both got great taste. Oh, yeah. Just like the weirdest thing. My most recent purchase, not purchase, gift, was actually for my birthday. And it was these, which are these bangles I've always loved. And they're from... Elsa Peretti and Elsa Peretti was a fabulous jewelry designer and she designed these for Tiffany and I've just always felt they were that that kind of incredible piece and whenever I saw really elegant Italian women they'd wear you know Italian women have a tendency to wear these very elegant double cuffs and I love the idea of a double cuff and I think when you have long arms and you have a bracelet sleeve um, and you look like the arm length is too short for you you know so if I wear this and I had something that was sort of like a bracelet sleeve like that. Mm -hmm. I always feel my arm looks like an orangutan. But then I put this on and it gives some structure and it allows me suddenly the freedom to wear things that I wasn't wearing before because these work. Mm -hmm. So that, I'm so excited and I'm going to wear these a lot. And I'm I'm so do you. And then I have to end with my ring, my Trini London <laughs> ring. Because so many of you asked me about this ring and... This is a ring that um, Katie Brain, who's Kate Cheekbones, um, when I launched Trini London for my birthday, she had a teapot mounted on a solid silver base. And so I put in it whatever colour that I'm most addicted to from when we launched. This is actually Katie Shea Shimmer. And sometimes I've had a double pot. So I've taken off this pot, put a double pot, and I put a Miracle Blow on one side and um, a Shea Shimmer the other side. And I just always have it and then whenever I'm doing press where they don't want you to wear or talk too much about a brand it's just always subtly there <laughs> so some people go what's that you know so it's it's sort of I think jewelry is about memories and it's also about being able to use few things to switch what you could use a bit of jewelry and switch out very few bits of clothing and make them feel different so always think if you had to think of what are the essentials You've got to think of your proportions. You've got to think how delicate are your wrists. Are you somebody who should go for big bangles or delicate bangles? We'll talk next time about what earrings you suit for the length of your neck and the shape of your face. Because for me, I need to fill in here. And if I have very long, thin, dangly, it makes my neck even longer. So I have to be very careful of how I wear things or how my hair might be. Mm -hmm. So all these elements 
are really relevant with earrings. It's much harder to get the right shape earring. You can have things that are right color. If your hair is a certain way, you can wear anything. But if you're just, your hair is up and it's just your bare face, what's the best shapes for different things? And I might do some for Molly that are right and some for you that are right. Okay, okay. Can't cool. wait. Thank well, I'm glad Ginny. you enjoyed it. I'm going to put this all back now because I can't bear to see it messy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ginny. See you Bye. next time. Bye.